and welcome back to the Photillustrator. I'm Jason Olsred and today I'm going to show you how I easily and quickly make a blur on an object in Photoshop for my composite photography. And I want to do this real quick today because I'm getting ready to go out, get on my bike, do probably about 40 miles in 100 degree weather here in Texas. It's a hot, hot day here. But before I get started on that, I really wanted to uh, kind of pay props to another photographer, uh, a great co composite photographer, but by the name of Josh Rossi, uh, or Rossi. Uh, Josh does a podcast. It's on fulltimephotographer.com. I'll show you that website here, uh, fulltimephotographer.com. Or you can go over to compositeplanet.com and get his podcast as well. Uh, here on iTunes and that type of thing. You can get it on St Stitcher, which is where I listen to it as well. But, you know, as a creative, as a photographer, it's super important, and we all know that it's su super important to stay dipped into the creative aspect of photography and get inspiration from other photographers and look at other uh, photography work and that type of thing to really gain that inspiration. But what Josh's, uh, you know, podcast does for me is it keeps me dipped into the business side of photography. Now business is business to a point, but I will say having run different other types of businesses that the photography business is a bit different and a bit um, atypical from what most, I think, small businesses go through and gaining our clients is a little bit different as well. Par probably partially because it's a creative industry uh, but Josh's website, uh, his podcast really goes into detail on what other photographers are doing, what is successful for them, what they've not had success with, those type of things. So regardless of what type of photography you do, this podcast can, you know, feed that element of what you need to build a photography business. And like he says, become a full-time photographer. So I can't recommend his podcast enough. I listen to it almost every time I'm in the car. There are about 20 to 30 minute little uh, segments or interviews. Definitely, definitely worth your time and investment into your photography and business. So check out Josh's uh, full-time photographer podcast over at fulltimephotographer.com. Go to compositeplanet.com or check it out on iTunes or Stitcher. Highly, highly recommended. Can't recommend it enough. So anyway, let's get into today's tutorial. And we're going to use this image that I just created called Arizona Vacation. This is the vacation that I took with my family. Every aspect of this composite really is true. There's every element, there's some truth to it. Uh, and so this for me means a lot as far as uh, a composite goes personally. So let's get into this bad boy here. All right, so this is where we started after my Photoshop. And as you can see, I take it into Lightroom and do some other fancy things to it and end up with that result. But here's where we are. This is where we started here with this, just so you know. So that was the beginning, the base. This is my uh, clean canvas here that I start with. And then through that process, go into uh, creating this image here. Click off of that and then go into my layers. And this is all the layers here. So we can click out of those. Let's see. Let's click out of the car here. Where is the car? I don't even see it. Van. That's funny. Should have the hopping rabbit underneath the van, but so it's actually overlaying it. That's okay. So anyway, as you can see here, we have a blur on the rabbit. And when we take that off, uh, comes down to that. And that doesn't look very realistic. That doesn't look like the bunny is actually hopping. And so we want to, I want to create uh, an element of the rabbit hopping and in motion. And in comp composite photography, it really is, a lot of this is really about tricking the eye into believing something is happening that probably really isn't happening. And I know with my composites, <clears throat> I like to create aspects that you would not ever see in one photograph, okay? So we can see a bunny hopping and we can even capture the effect of it hopping. 
uh, in one photograph, but we can't capture that in one photograph along with the bird, along with the van, the police car, the scorpion, the dust devil, the mountains, all these aspects in one image. So I, I went out and this rabbit was photographed behind my mother-in-law's house in the little park that they have back there. She has a lot of different rabbits, like eight, 10 rabbits that just hang out there and live in the heat of Arizona. So I uh, went back there, photographed this rabbit as my son scared it, and I photographed it hopping away and then wanted to create the illusion of it hopping off the road as I passed it with the car. So how I did that is we take a copy of it here and the important aspect of creating a realistic or somewhat realistic blur is to blur the image that overlays the still image. All right, so we're gonna take that, we're gonna go up here with a filter and we're gonna give it a motion blur. Super simple so far, right? And then we're gonna motion blur this thing at a, a straight angle for you know, 90 degree angle here for uh, or I guess zero degree angle for what we're going to do. All right. And so that's probably a little bit too powerful. And really this is all about taste and what you would like to see here. So let's just say 79. I have no idea what I did on the original, but looks good to me. And so we take it to 79 and then we're going to take that blur and we're going to push it back just a little bit, kind of like that. Just like that and then we're going to bring the opacity down maybe just a little bit like that and then we're going to put a layer mask on it or you can just use your erase tool i like using layer mask because it gives me a little bit of um, leeway for error i can make some errors and still correct it easily with the uh, it, it's working non-destructively versus using a erase tool works destructively so it's a little bit more yeah you, know, you can you have to do the command z or um, back what is it the uh, undo uh, function to get back to original if you make a mistake so anyway with the layer mask with black paintbrush at 100 percent flow 100 percent opacity let's go 50 percent opacity we're gonna go in there and start erasing out the overlaying image of the rabbit being blurred okay so we really just want the back end of it being blurred out and so just about like that and then you can bring your opacity down even more if you want to capture more of that detail on the back end of the rabbit but still give it that blur effect and then again just wherever it looks good all right so that's not enough that's probably pretty good probably even better so around 78 or so and so that's how you add a realistic blur to a bunny rabbit in your composite photography or any element I used it on the bird I used it on this bird I used it on the lizard all the elements that I want to look like they're moving in my composites I actually did this kind of effect the most important thing to keep in mind when you're doing a blur uh, for your composites is to overlay the blur effect over the original image. Uh, if you underlay it, if you put it underneath it, while it gives it a blur, you still capture too much of the edge of the rabbit there. And I did this in the beginning and I thought, oh, that looks cool. And then realized that's stupid. It doesn't look cool at all. It doesn't even look realistic. And that's when I started uh, putting the layer or the uh, blur effect over my actual image to give it that effect of motion. So. This is what we just created, just so you know. Uh, this is where we are here, and this is what I did in the composite. A little more white in the composited uh, image here, but anyway, you get the idea. Go out, start creating some blurs in your composites. Give it some motion, give it some action. It really does bring a lot of interest into a scene that you're compositing versus just everything's you know looks like it's sitting still doesn't look realistic so this gives it kind of a, a realistic vibe it tricks the viewer's eye into feeling like there's more action and motion into a composite that should have more action and motion so anyway go out there rock and roll some blur i will get on my bike ride you know 40 miles in the heat sweat it off and we'll see you next time 
on the Foot Illustrator. <laughs>